Hi, and welcome to this video on sigma notation, part two, brought to you by the answer series. In the first example, we are going to take a series of numbers and express them in sigma notation. There are three logical steps that we need to follow. Firstly, we need to determine the general term of the series. Secondly, we need the number of terms in the series. With that information, we are then able to write our expression into sigma notation, making sure that we state the start and end value of substitution, as well as the formula that we are using. Pause the video and try this on your own. We have a linear pattern with a difference of 4, so the general term is tn equals 4n minus 3. If we equate the last term that we have been given with the formula, we can work out that there are six terms in the series, and then we simply write down that we are substituting values from 1 to 6 using the formula for n minus 3. This is a very similar question. Pause the video and try this on your own. You could use a quadratic formula, or you could make this easy for yourself by recognizing that those numbers are simply the squares of their positions. If you know that the square root of 625 is in fact 25, then you don't even need to work out the position. Or you could write down that n squared is equal to 625, square root both sides and get 25. You will not use the negative square root because n has to be a positive integer. The final step, write down your start and end values of substitution and remember to give your formula. This is a fraction question which can be off-putting. It isn't difficult. Pause the video and try it on your own. If it helps, you can separate the numerators and the denominators into separate sequences initially. The numerators are even numbers generated by the formula 2n. The denominators are odd numbers generated by the formula 2n plus 1. It's worth noticing that the denominator in each of these statements is simply one more than the numerator. So it could be done very easily by simply stating 2n over 2n plus 1 by inspection. There are seven terms because we can count the number of terms in the sequence, or we equate the formula that we have generated with the last term that we have been given, which is 14 over 15, and work out the value of n that solves that equation. This looks complicated, but isn't. Pause the video and try it on your own. By substituting the values of p from 3 to 6 in both expressions, you will arrive at your answer as long as you are careful and methodical. Example 5 is refreshingly different. Pause the video and try this on your own. What is important to notice here is the fact that b is an unknown constant, whereas k is an unknown variable, because as we substitute the values of k that we have been given, we will continually change that result. With that substitution, you will get to 5b equal to 10a, which will give you the answer you need of a equal to a half b. Example 6 is challenging because of the way it has been presented. I want you to pause the video and try it on your own. In case you got stuck, some quick reminders. Although it is obvious that a equals a, it is also possible for a to equal a plus b, as long as the b value equals zero. In the situation that we are working with, we have two identical formulae. The difference in the two statements lies only in the substitution value towards the end. So the second expression 
has two additional substitutions. The two results cannot be equal unless those two additional substitutions produce a zero result. Try this one last time on your own. You have to focus on the part that gives you zero. Careful substitution and simplification produces an x value of 13, which is a constant value. You are now going to expand the series and substituting k carefully, first one, then two, then three, will produce 11 numbers and coincidentally, they will add up to a total of 11. The last question is very challenging. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Pause the video and try it on your own. Then I will give you some trig reminders and another chance to try it on your own. Very important trig identity, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals one. In other words, sine squared 10 degrees plus cos squared 10 degrees equals one, sine squared 27 degrees plus cos squared 27 degrees equals one, and so on. Also critical to this question is an understanding of co-ratios and the fact that the sine of theta will equal the cos of 90 degrees minus theta. A quick look at the sketch will help you to understand this better. If you highlight that line, theta is positioned opposite A. So the sine of theta puts A over C. On the other hand, if you change your orientation and now go to 90 degrees minus theta and work with the cos ratio, you will also put A over C. Practically, we can use this to explain that sine 46 degrees equals cos 44 degrees, sine 79 degrees equals cos 11 degrees, and so on. Try the question one last time on your own. We start by expanding the statement we've been given. So we write out the first few values. We write out several values across the middle section, and we write out the last few values. It isn't possible to write everything out, so we indicate that we have continued the pattern, but not given all the detail. Now we need to check if we can pair all of these values off with each other, looking at complementary angles. And we find that there are two problems. The first one is the fact that the sine squared of 45 degrees can't find a partner because 45 degrees does not have a complementary angle in the selection. So we replace the sine squared of 45 degrees with one over root two all squared. Right on the end, we have a second issue. 90 degrees does not have a partner because there's no complementary angle to 90. So we replace the sine squared of 90 degrees with one. Now we tackle the rest of the values and look for their partners and deal with that issue. So on the left, we leave everything unchanged. On the right, we systematically replace all the values with their co-ratios. So sine squared 46 changes to cos squared 44, sine squared 47 to cos squared 43, and we continue that through to the end. We indicate what we are doing by simply drawing an arc from sine squared 1 to cos squared 1. I pair those values off, and I show in my working that I have sine squared plus cos squared values bracketed into a pair. Now we draw a second arc, and we go from sine squared 2 degrees to cos squared 2 degrees. We go back, and we show that we have linked those two values in a set of brackets. So essentially, we are linking our complementary pairs together. We now have sine squared 43 plus cos squared 43, and we have sine squared 44 plus cos squared 44. So in total, we have 44 of these bracketed pairs. And then on the end, we have the results we processed at the beginning. We can now write down that we have 44 times 1 plus 1, 5, which gives us 45, 5. This is a challenging question, and it has been a challenging video. I hope that you enjoyed it. And if you take the time to go back to any questions you struggled with, I'm confident that you will cope with questions of a similar nature when you come across them in the future. Thank you for watching this video, brought to you by The Answer Series. Check out the video description below for practice questions from our study guides. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any new episodes. Follow us on Instagram or Facebook to stay on top of the latest TAS news and launches. 
So that's it for now from the answer series, your key to exam success.